This is Georgie Jessel. Once upon a time, there was a wonderful world of entertainment called vaudeville. It had amusement for everybody in the family, mama, papa, auntie, uncle, and all the boys and girls. And on every bill, there was fun for the whole family. But alas, poor vaudeville is now a lost art. But many of the voices of the greats are still with us because of albums like this. Yes, the voices and song and talk from people who made the world laugh and applaud from the early 1900s to the present day. Their voices are real, I know, because I was around in the 1900s, and thank the Lord, I still am. But you know, folks, nothing real good is ever lost. Even folks who don't believe in anything have to go along with that. And because of the great Thomas Edison and other men who perfected the phonograph record, we can now hear voices today of great people in all walks of life who physically have left us, but their voices are still with us, and you can hear them now. From the great Caruso to William Jennings Bryan, Franklin Delano Roosevelt to Bert Williams and Rudy Valley and Valentino. And now a few words from the most colorful actor that the world has ever known, the great John Barrymore. Ethel gave me my first break in the theater. She put me on the stage for the first time professionally in a play called Captain Jinx. I next played with her in a drama called Sunday in which she spoke the now famous line, that's all there is. There isn't any more. And now, here's a few bars from the madcap of Audville, who in the early days, Miss Eva Tangway, she stood out on the stage in pink tights and told the world that she didn't care. And now, as a comparison to the raucous voice of Eva Tangwe, we go now to the warm, sultry tone of Malena Dietrich. Mädchen von Kopf bis Fuß auf, Liebe eingestellt, denn das ist meine Welt und sonst gar nicht. Das ist, was soll ich machen, meine Natur? Ich kann halt lieben nur und sonst gar nicht. And now, bless him, the only partner that I ever had in the show business, he only left us a short time ago, Eddie Cantor. Ma, he's making eyes at me. Ma, he's awful nice to me. Ma, he's almost breaking my heart. If you peek him, you will see I'm going to weaken Ma. He wants to marry me, be my honey bee. He wants the neck, he wants to wrestle. What's his name? It's Georgie Jessel Ma. He's kissing me. And in the same Ziegfeld Follies with Eddie in 1918, the great Bert Williams. When life seems full of clouds and rain, and I am full of nothing and pain, who fills my thumping, thumping brain? When winter comes with snow and sleet, and me with hunger and cold feet, who says here when it buys them? Go ahead and get something to eat. No bad. And now here's a couple of gals who made vaudeville musical comedy sex conscious long before Harlow, Monroe, or even Theda Barra. First. The Red Hot Mama, Sophie Tucker. Some of these days, you'll miss me, honey. Some of these days, you're gonna be so lonely. You'll miss my hug. You're gonna miss my kissing. You're gonna miss me, honey, when I'm far away. That I feel so lonely. And now a gal who said, come up and see me sometime. May West. And um, don't forget, come up and see me sometime. And in the late 1920s, Will Rogers was still in the Zeke Follies, and here he is. 
You know, Mr. Zigfield, he sent there to Oklahoma to get me. Uh, the critics raved over me when I first went into New York. Said they never had seen such features. Said I was different. Zigfield not only glorified the American girl, but put enough clothes on her to make people want to see her. Mr. Zigfield has produced the most wonderful shows year after year of any producer the theater has ever had. Every musical show that's produced is just an imitation of Zigfield. Around that same time, three great personalities were playing at the Palace Theater in New York. Rudy Valley and the high-hatted tragedy of song Ted Lewis and the great humorist Fred Allen. Hi ho, everybody. This is Rudy Valley announcing and directing the recording of our radio greeting. Hi ho, everybody. Hi ho. Is everybody happy? I have been asked to make an announcement of minute importance, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Allen! Oh, now wait. Mr. Allen! Now, order, please. If that's some poker player calling for chips, I'll be down there with a chip on my shoulder before you can put out the kitty. Hello! Well, sir. <laughs> well, sir, as I live and try to keep from feeling like the owner of a luggage shop with these bags under my eye, <laughs> if it is in Portland. A little while later, when radio became the rage, five stars dominated the scene. You all will remember, I, I'm sure, and I hope, Ben Burney when he closed this program with... This is Ben Burney, the voice of experience speaking. Elsa. And now the time has come to lend thine ears to au revoir, pleasant dreams. Au revoir, pleasant dreams. Think of us. When requesting your theme. Au revoir, a fond cheerio, a toodle-doodle, a bit of a tweet-tweet. God love you. And... And Fanny Bryce, who went from the sad, lonesome girl standing under a lamppost singing My Man to the six-year-old mischievous baby Snooks. Now stop that. I know what's wrong. The Indians used a bow to twist their stick with. A bow? Yes. Here, yeah, I have a bow in my hair. Not that kind of a bow. A bow like in a bow and arrow. Oh, that kind. I got one upstairs. I was playing William Tell with ropes the air. William Tell with a real bow and arrow? Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Snooks, <laughs> did you shoot an apple off your little brother's head? No, Daddy. I couldn't find an apple. Oh, thank heaven for that. So I used a grape. <laughs> Just about that time, people all over America were saying, Who's on first? With Abbott and Costello. Well, now, let's see. We have on the bags. We have who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. What silly name. I say who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You know the fellow's name? Well, I should. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. That's it. That's who? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? Have you got a first baseman? Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. <laughs> That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Now tell me who's on first. That's right. I want to know what's the guy's name on first. No, base. no, what's on second. I'm base. not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. Now, we're not mentioning third. Now, let's get together. How did I get on third base? You happen to mention his name. If I mention a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third no, base? No, who is playing first? I'm not asking you who's on first. Who is on first? I'm asking you, what's the guy's name on third? What is on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. I can't change their name. You got a first baseman? Absolutely. When you pay him off every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> Why not? The man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Sure he does. <laughs> Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. <laughs> well, all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Listen, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. I yes. pick it up. And besides these comics, there was a young Irish tenor. Morton Downey. Fred can know how Ireland sons can make themselves at home. North or south or east or west, wherever they may roam. It's myself that took a trip across the seas one day. And I can swear that over there they get along okay. Oh, it's a grand New York, a blessed land New York. Surely Irish people pass with all the news. 
Bethany Flat and Lad have rocked the dead be dad when they sing the wearing of the green to sin to pay the blues. And the warm ballad singing of Miss Kate Smith. When the moon comes over the mountain, I'm alone with my memories of you. And then there was a tall, dark, and handsome singing piano player who was putting on the Ritz. Yes, Harry Richmond. Have you seen the well-to-do up on Lenox Avenue? On that famous thoroughfare with their noses in the air. High hats and colored collars, white bats and fifteen dollars. Spending every dime for a wonderful time. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Harlem sits? Putting on the ribs. And I remember one night Harry telling me he'd fallen in love with a girl he'd met in his Richmond club the night before. She was the blonde bombshell that they were all talking about. And they still are talking about today, Jean Hollow. And here she is thanking Howard Hughes for giving her her first opportunity to appear on the screen. I would like to use this occasion to publicly thank Mr. Hughes for the opportunity he gave me. And three personalities who weren't famous on the stage, but famous in their own vocations. The evangelist, Amy Semple McPherson. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, come, come. Like chiming bells at evening tide, this word rings out all through the Bible. Come in Genesis, come in Matthew, come clear through to the Revelation. You can talk about to me, just as much as you please. I'll talk about to you, down on my knees. You can talk about me, just as much as you please. I'll talk about you, down on my knees. Ain't I gonna breathe? And now the voice of a man who still hears his words, I'm sure, although he's no longer with us. But I know that somewhere he's listening to My Fair Lady, which was his original play, Pygmalion, George Bernard Shaw. Your president, who became famous by feeding the starving millions of war-devastated Europe, cannot feed his own people in time of peace. Our statesmen on both sides can do nothing but buy them off with doles and appeals to charity. And here's the voice of one of the great men who did his best to bring peace into the world without violence. I regard myself as a soldier, though a soldier of peace. I know the value of discipline and truth. I must ask you to believe me when I say that I have never made a statement of this description that the masses of India if it became necessary, would resort to violence. I regard myself as incapable in my lucid moments of having, uh, of making a statement of this character. You know who that was? Oh, I'm sure you do. Mahatma Gandhi. The first crooner who found his way quickly into the hearts of the people and then left us all too soon was Russ Colombo. Come, let us throw down lover's land once more to sing love's old refrain Soon we must set Of Vida's end Of Vida's end, my dear Here in your arms I can't remain So let me kiss you once again Soon we must set all the desert, all the desert, my dear. And just about that time, two men 
Had the entire nation seen old Mr. Gallagher? Yes, Mr. Sheehan. Good morning, Mr. Gallagher. Good morning, Mr. Sheehan. There is something that is troubling me. That is very plainly seen. Mr. Gallagher, I'm a peaceful man. I never yell or shout. Mr. Sheehan, if you will confide in me, I'll try and help you out. Oh, Mr. Gallagher. Yes, hello. Mr. Gallagher. Well, well, well. Do you think it's wrong for a man to strike his wife? Strike his wife? Suppose she goes out every night. Then comes home and starts a fight. Is a man supposed to stand the streets and all his life? Well, no, but Mr. Sheehan, Mr. Sheehan, a man who raised his hand to his wife is low and mean. If it's more than you can stand, remember, never use your hand. Use diplomacy, Mr. Gallagher. Use a sandbag, Mr. Sheehan. And the wonderful sister team who are starring in the musical play Topsy and Eva, the Duncan Sisters. Remember when the clouds gather, sunshine will soon be through. Remembering is all I need to be. So try and remember too. One of the most original comedians who ever lived was W.C. Fields. I remember him when he first said, Hello, my little chickadee, to a beautiful chorus girl in the Broadway musical play, Poppy. I happened to stumble across a case of bourbon and went right on stumbling for several days thereafter. <laughs> of course, now I touch nothing stronger than buttermilk. Ninety-proof buttermilk. <laughs> I look on my days of revelry with scorn and reproachment and shudder. <laughs> when I recall going to the corner saloon, tugging at my daddy's coattails and saying, Father, dear father, come home with me now. Bring a jug with you. <laughs> and in the late 20s, two girls came to New York, both with decidedly different styles. There were no microphones in those days, and these two girls didn't need them. You know, you could hear a pin drop in the noisy nightclub as this girl sat on the piano, brushed the ever-running tear from her eyes with a long silk handkerchief, Miss Helen Morgan. Don't ever leave me now that you're here. It's where you belong Everything seems so right when you're near When you're away, it's all wrong I'm so dependent when I need comfort I always run to you Don't ever leave me, cause if you do I'll have no one to run and the other girl, people used to say when she sang on Broadway, we can hear her in the Bronx, Ethel Merman. Ford and Mabel, seated at a table, walking over by God day. Mabel's 40, fattened over 40, said remember e For a bottle and a glass But in spite of everything The gal had class Then one summer She wed a faucet drummer Struck with a refined like way Oh, Edie was a lady Edie was a lady Oh, how cats were shady Oh, her mask was shady. Edie had class. With a capital K. She was a lady. Edie was a lady. The soft shoe, the waltz clog, and the tap dance were a delicate art when you listen to Pat Rooney or Bill Bojangles Robinson. Five 
back that old fashioned waltz star. Bring back that old fashioned dance. Like the daughter of Rosie O'Grady. It's time that your feet had a chance. Go ask your father and mother. Who was it that taught them the dance? They'll tell you Pat Rooney, whose feet are so tuny. Oh, bring back that old-fashioned bend. This is Bill Robinson talking. I will now endeavor to do a tap routine. And I'm going to name each and every step as I go along. And please try and follow me. And here is the soft voice of America's greatest writer of popular songs, Irving Berlin. Oh, how I hate to get up in the morning. Oh, how I'd love to remain in bed. For the hardest blow of all is to hear the bugle call. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning. Someday I'm going to murder the bugler. Someday they're going to find him dead. I'll amputate his reveille and step upon it heavily and spend the rest of my life in bed. And now the greatest all-around talent that the show business has ever known, George M. Cohen, rendering his famous curtain speech. I don't know who I am, and if I knew, I'd be the most miserable man on earth. But my greatest happiness lies in the fact that I occupy a unique position. For I have never been cast for a part in this great world drama, life. I am a lonely, single-handed spectator. I'm sitting back, looking on and laughing. I'm laughing at the monkey signs of the great all-star company of millions and millions of men and women who are unknowingly playing the piece for me. I am the audience. And if I may say so, I'm a highly intellectual audience. For in all the changing scenes of this ever-beginning, never-ending, plotless plot, I recognize the spiritual hand of a great director, a master dramatist, who has so skillfully staged this tightly woven, disconnected spectacle of tragic nonsense. And so I am amused, and I laugh, and I applaud, and if I am any critic, this is a very good play. Spiritually, I really think that my father thanks you Mother thanks you, my sister thanks you, and as for myself, that goes without saying. And now the voice of the never forgotten actor who jumped from the vaudeville circuit to be the dramatic star in the theater on Broadway, Dodsworth, and many other stage plays, and then the Academy Award winner of oh so many pictures, Mr. Walter Houston. When lovely Venus lies beside her lord and master Mars, they mutually profit by their star. The Heidi, 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 Heidi Ho, that are all America starting to swing with Minnie DeMucha, Cab Calloway. Heidi, 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 And about that time, this was our last chance to go to the palace and hear Nora Bays. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Kelly is double to win. Why has anybody here seen Kelly? Oh, you know him by his smile. His hair is red and his eyes are blue. He is Irish through and through. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Kelly from the Emerald Isle. And on the same bill were the never-to-be-forgotten two black crows, Moran and Mac. 
Doggone it, Amos. You, you've been in all those shows. You, you must have traveled restrictively, huh? Traveled? Boy, I've been all over Europe, Asia, Cincinnati. Uh, C- Cincinnati, Ojo. Ojo? Ohio. How you spell it? Capital O-H-10. In the year 1931, I made a movie, and my theme song is still being sung on every Mother's Day, My Mother's Eyes. And here is the great, talented comedian and mimic imitating me and others, Willie Howard. I was over at the Paramount Studio the other day, and I happened to hear an argument. There was Georgie Jessel, Al Jolts, and Eddie Cantor. So Jessel said to Jolts, he said, now, listen, Al, of course you beat me to the picture version of the jazz singer, but if I'd have made it, I'd still be playing on Broadway. But I made a better picture. In fact, I thought of what better I liked was called Lucky Boy. When I sang that theme song, everybody was crying. Even my cry was so bad. Remember when I sang that, uh... One bright and guiding light Taught me wrong from right I found in my mother's eye Those baby tales she told The path all play with gold I found in my mother's eye Hello, Mama. Hey, Mama, this is Georgie talking. Your boy Georgie, that's right. Yeah, the one who sends you the checks every week. That's right, Mama. That's so, Mama. That's too bad, Mama. Yeah? That was Mama. A real unselfish love I found in my mother's eyes. Then Jolson bought in and says, Now listen, Jeff, what are you talking about? Why, if I, if I'd have made that, that picture lucky boy, why, here's where I give that same song. I've given him that, uh, one bride. Shining a light. Ah. Yeah. I found it in my mammy's eyes, you hear me? In my mammy's eyes. Those baby, those baby tells you tall. A path, a path, a path, a path, a path, a I found it in my mammy's eyes. Sparrow, one on his soul. I walked this street and now, pal, you should move back to the Warner Brothers. Make it a picture. Give it to me, I'm telling you. Ha ha. God, give sense. Sent from above. A real, a real unselfish love I found in my mammy's voice. Mammy. Then Eddie Cannon, buddy, says, Listen here, boys, what are you talking about? Why, if I, if I didn't meet that picture lucky boy, he's the way I would give the song out. Give it to me there. One bright and guiding light taught me wrong from right I found in my girlie's eyes. Those baby tales she told, fat old play with gold, I found in my girlie's eyes. Like a warning sparrow, one lonely soul, walk a straight and narrow to reach my goal. My girl is no fool, you're seen the vestibule, I found in my girlie's eyes. And now two gentlemen who made nearly all of the fair sakes from chambermaids to duchesses look dreamy-eyed, Rudy Valley. And Rudolph Valentino. For I'm just a vagabond lover in search of a sweetheart, it seems. And I know that someday I'll discover her, the girl of my vagabond dreams. Four brothers who knock Broadway and Hollywood for a loop. And those of us who stay up late are still laughing at their hilarious antics, the four Marx brothers. Now listen here. I've got a swell job for you, but first I'll have to ask you a couple of important questions. Now what is it that has four pair of pants, lives in Philadelphia, and it never rains but it pours? That's a good one. I give you three guesses. Now let me see. Has four pair of pants, lives in Philadelphia. Is it male or female? No, I don't think so. Is he dead? Who? I don't know. I give up. I give up too. Now I ask you another one. What is it? Got a big black mustache. Smokes a big black cigar. And he's a big pain in the neck. Now don't tell me. Has a big black mustache. Smokes a big black cigar. 
And there's a big pain in the... Uh, does he wear glasses? <laughs> That's right. You guess it quick. Just for that, you don't get the job I was going to give you. What job? Secretary of War. All right, I take it. So, now that you're Secretary of War, what kind of an army do you think we ought to have? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think we should have a standing army. Hey, wait a minute. Why should we have a standing army? Because then we save money on chairs. And here's a little girl with a baby face and big blue eyes. Had everybody singing with her whenever she sang boop boop de doop Miss Helen Kane. I don't be like that. Oh, honey dear, you are so upset. Oh, honey dear, you are so appealing. And when you love, oh, you love with such feeling. I love that boop boop ba -dum. You love that boop boop ba -dum. We love that boop ba -dum, boop ba -dum. I don't be like that. In the 1930s, I had the great privilege in the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles of introducing one of the sweetest singers of all time. These are the words that I used at that time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is said of this man that you're about to hear that when as a boy he sang in the hills of Killarney, all the nightingales hung their heads in shame, John McCormick. Marquito, Marquito, with you here, Marquito, then life once more joyful. Oh, world dear and lonely and sunny, your love was like sunshine to me. France has been very, very kind to us. Maybe not so much lately from a political standpoint, but so many importations from Paris have brought us much joy. When we were fighting for our liberty, France sent us the gallant Marquis de Lafayette. I, of course, didn't know him. That was in 1776. But Jack Benny tells me he was a wonderful fellow. But of the French theater, we had Sarah Bernhardt, Anna Held, Miss Tanguette, Gabby Delise, and much later on, bless her, Marie Chevalier. Oh, there are a lot of girls that came from Gay Paris, but I think the loveliest of them all was Irene Bodoni. And a while, someday, I'm going to see my dream at last come true, but until then, in my mind, I'm going to be, going to be, I'll be waiting. has sent us the greatest voice since God made the world. Some tenors have been as close as far as tone and quality, but for dramatic ability to make audiences stand up on their feet and cheer, there never was a tenor like Enrico Caruso. the voices of four great Americans. Three of them became the greats of our nation. The other tried very hard a couple of times but didn't make it. Some people say he talked too much and that's why he lost. But the crime in life is to lose. Here is a bit of his most famous speech many, many years ago, the great commoner William Jennings Bryan. The great cities are in favor of the gold standard. We reply that the great cities rest upon our broad and fertile prairies. Burn down your cities and leave our farms and your cities will spring up again as if by magic. But destroy our farms and the grass will grow in the streets of every city of the country. If they dare to come out in the open fields and defend the gold standards, the good thing, we will answer their demand by saying to them, 
You shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. About the year 1915, while appearing as a boy entertainer in Kansas City, I had the great privilege of meeting one of the great Americans of all time. At that time, as I recall, he was a captain in the army. And later on, he became one of the great, great presidents of our country. I had the privilege of speaking but a short time ago on the 8th of May in Washington at his 80th birthday, Harry S. Truman. I had my sandwich and glass of buttermilk and went to bed at 6.30. And along about 12 o'clock, I happened to wake up for some reason and the radio was turned on and Mr. Captain Barnes was saying, while well, the president is a million votes ahead in the popular vote, we have yet to hear. <laughs> and we are very sure that when the country vote comes in, Mr. Truman will be defeated by another hundred percent. And I went back to bed and went to sleep. <laughs> was over and that uh, I should be congratulated on the fact that I had won the election and uh, uh, apparently it was too bad but it happened. There are many great tragedies in life. Sometimes they are made up perhaps with the fact of people feeling that there is an afterlife and the greatness of people continues and continues. Such is the case of the young handsome President of the United States who said Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. John Fitzgerald Kennedy. United, there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided, there is little we can do. For we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split asunder. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I believe, and I'm sure that many of you will agree with me, that when the history of this great country is written, particularly in these our times, that people will say one of the greatest men that ever lived in our land was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. May you, by your deeds, show the world that we of the United States are one people, of one mind, one spirit, one clear resolution, walking before God in the light of the living. My friends, you have just listened to the voices of men and women who made their mark in the world and left an indelible memory. I don't think they'll ever be forgotten. This is Georgie Jessel in the cool of the evening wishing you a very warm good night.